So I have my little mini wet felting kit, which is fine for this. If I wanted to do two pelts at once, I would use the bigger wet felting kit. Um, and that makes sense. I mean, you you have enough to do two frogs. You might as well be efficient in your rolling and, um, and make both. But due to lack of space, we're going to just do one. So you want to rough up your merino pre-felt a little bit either with your fingers or with a brush, just get some of this fiber loosened up so it'll grab what we lay down. I'm gonna go grab the other frogs so that you can see them. So much fun to pick out the colors. Um, this guy made a while back, so he's just, He's just off white there. I didn't even I didn't even color it. And then this dude um, I did like a kind of a golden white belly. So you'll see in your colors all your options. And in your kit is going to be a little um, template so you can kind of see as you're laying it out where you want things to be. Sometimes I do like two ridges down each side, that's pretty typical of frogs. So, you know, you can see where those go. Um, generally, as I get out to the edges, I want to fan to towards sprout because that's the color that's on their feet and hands. So um, it helps to blend if you do that. So and could, then, people, could people cut out the frog thing? <clears throat> like. Um, cut yes, you are. Trace. You are gonna cut it. You are gonna cut it out. Would it be Definitely. a problem if someone wanted to use like some kind of fabric marker to actually mark their prefill? Um, no, I don't. I don't think so because it all gets it all gets fuzzed. So, okay. so yes, you'll cut this out, and then you're not. You're gonna lay out the whole piece of prefill. Um, you're not gonna cut the prefill until after right. it's felted. So here's one that I did just to show you, like I had him go a little golden towards the belly. Um, I cut some darker spots out of the deep um, purple color. I used the neps and silk. This is the belly that goes with this one. Um, so you, what you're gonna do is peruse <laughs> your color choices and decide what color you want your frog to be. And then you can even, you can even like blend a little bat together if you wanted to. So I could take, generally I'm saving the lighter colors um, for the belly. And the, the, the more vibrant colors for his back. So you have three different kinds of fiber here. You have merino, you have silk. These are your merinos also. And you have some of our top coat. And they can be used pretty much interchangeably except for the silk. The silk is more of an accent. Um, so for example, let's say I want to blend a color for my, um, for my fox, um, my fox, my frog's body. I would grab my hand carters. I can even put a little bit of silk right into my blend if I want to. And so you totally can use these just just laying them out. It's such a it's a small enough thing that um, that just Pulling your fiber and laying it out is going to make a really pretty blended color scheme. But I'll just I'll just take this opportunity to show you how to um, how to card something together as well. So it's like a rocking motion, and I'm moving up from the bottom edge, just taking what comes, and then rocking farther and farther up until all the fiber has transferred 
from one paddle to the other. Like a scoop. You're kind of like scooping. I'm really afraid I'm going to hit the camera. <laughs> You're making a cool uh, color. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty color. All right. So I'm going to consider this kind of like my um, my main main part of the body. I just want to try to pull nice nice thin paintbrush strokes of color. So that was a nice bright color combo. And then maybe as he gets towards the belly, he gets a little lighter or like as the fiber is going to wrap around the belly. I'm going to bring it a little lighter. When you pull this fiber, try to grab this, the tippy edge and try to pull the whole length and that gives you that nice consistent piece to put down. If you're doing this and it, it gets all chunky and stripey, you don't want that. You want, I just try to think of it as like nice even paint strokes. So let me get, maybe I'll just do like a little, I want to put a little bit of this color going up towards the head as well, the color that I blended. Oh, I like that. There's like a chunk of gold. I'm going to leave it there like as a, as intentional. I'm going to head out towards the legs with it before I switch to sprout. This can be so, so many different things. Um, across the back, maybe I'll put a nice bright stripe. I'm saying stripe, but like center to this. Well, then you still have neps. Yep, got to do neps. So I can use my template. I can see that I'm I'm a little low here. Like, I, I really want this stuff a little higher. Because really, right here, all this switches to, switches to legs, pretty much. You scooted down to the bottom of your bubble wrap. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Same thing with my belly. My belly isn't actually centered on this. It should be a little bit north of the center. So I'm just kind of scooting everything up visually. Okay, so neps, I have a variety. I think I'll put the purple on here because I think that's a really fun contrast to the green and the um, bright blue. So I usually do two ridges, so I could try to, I could put the purple neps on the ridges and then do a different color neps on the head. Like maybe do this kind of on the back of his head and down his body. Whatever you do, try to spread them out a little bit. They grab better when they have a nice amount of space between them. And then Aaron taught us that silk works itself nicely down into the neps. So I'll take a look at my silk colors and see what I want to use. If I do this dark, I wonder if it will look kind of like 
sort of shadowy in between all the neps if it'll work itself down in there. I'm going to try it. I want to try to get the silk not too linear, so I'm kind of like trying to dis, you know, deorient the the fibers from being in all one direction. I don't know if I just made up a word, but like I want it to look random and not like a stripe. I have a good bit of your head, just so you know. Well, <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't... I know. It's good for you to tell me that my head is in the way. I'm going to put some gold, too. We'll see what happens here. This is so long and straight, it's hard to... It's hard to get to do something different. Hankies would be fun if you had some. Mm -hmm. You could play with that. You could play with um, maybe with the gold. I will. You could play with cutting it up. Um, any of these, any of these colors, you could cut up, make it look a little more like confetti-like. Just have fun with it. They're so. They can be so many different things. I. I think it's more fun to try and see what the fiber, you know, can do for you rather than trying to control the fiber too much. How'd the frog die? Oh no, I don't know. How? No, nobody really knows. He just croaked. <laughs> okay, let's see. What else do I want? I need to get my sprout. And work the sprout towards the edges. Yikes. If you have any rough skin, that silk will let you know it. I know. You know, I didn't I didn't say this, but with your sprout and your core wool, I think we give you like plenty but if you want to be sure that you're not overdoing it um split split those in half you know so that um so that you're sure you have enough material for both both your frogs it's so funny he's like a little hippie frog <laughs> i'm taking some of that mix i made and just putting it back over in a few places and I think I'll take it like super duper thin over all this I'm like making like a super thin web to go onto this neps and silk and all this stuff that I put on there I want it still to show but I just want to be sure that everything sticks Hokey dokey. And then on on this guy, I've got this um, this light merino, so I think I'll start with that. Kind of crisscross crisscross some of that on here as evenly as possible. I'm moving people all over. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. That's all right. We, but they need to see, so. It looks like I'm taking a lot, but I'm taking like really thin, thin pieces. And then, just to mix it up a little bit, let's put a little bit of this dune, kind of sandy colored silk in there. Those colors are nice together. Very pretty. The fan's blowing, so I'm like, I'm trying to crisscross it, and it's blowing in <laughs> And 
then to make sure my silk stays put, I'm going to use a little bit of this um, amber colored merino. Not too much, just a little bit. All right, and that'll be my belly. I keep the belly pretty, pretty nondescript. You're just trying to make a color, basically. Okay, now we're gonna get all our fiber out of the way so it doesn't get wet. So much fiber left. Like, this top coat stuff is enough for like four or five frogs, but we want you to have choices. Um, a little dark purple would be, let me see if I can do a little dark purple confetti thing, accentuating my purple nips that are under there. So kind of like in that stripe. All right. Good. I think that's good. Okay, now I need to put my wall to hold everything in place. My sprinkler. Probably gonna take like two squeezes. So if someone has never ever wet felted before, what do they need to know? You gotta be real gentle at first. Mm -hmm. My second squeeze, I'm gonna take a little bit of our um, lavender olive oil soap and um, and just start to soap up my hands. Get a little extra soap happening. Before I let all of this out, now I want to feel feel if I need more more water. I don't I don't quite know yet. So I'm just right now I'm just pressing it down and I'm feeling um if there's any spot, you'll you'll be able to tell because if it's dry somewhere, it'll be a little puffy. And you can kind of work the water out to the edges. So I need a little more on these, a little more water on these edges here. So that's probably good. And I wore the wrong jewelry today. <laughs> Did not wear wet felting jewelry. So with my hands, my soapy hands, I'm just pressing it down. <laughs> and if you hear me grunt, it's because I worked out for the first time in like three months. <laughs> I'm so sore. <laughs> okay. Then you'll start to feel it just kind of harden almost under your hands. And that's when you can begin to apply a little bit more pressure, just kind of pressing and circling. I'm using my whole palm. Don't want any more water than this. You can see like, you can see it puddle a little bit if I really squeeze and that's, that's perfect. So everything's wet, but it's not like running, you know, onto the floor. After a little bit of this, we want to, um, some fiber will come through your, your netting or your voile, that's okay. But we do want to make sure it's not getting embedded. So once we feel like we're getting everything to begin to stick together under here, we want to lift the voile and make sure it's not stuck in it. Are you trying to signal me something? No. <laughs> Did I move on? What are you... No. Are you trying to kill a bug? Well, it... is this wasp bothering yeah, you? Yeah, well, the dog isn't happy, and I think he tried to bite it, and <laughs> now it's gone again. Okay, so to check the edge, I want to grab... 
and carefully make sure, like pull my my wool away Ooh. and make sure that it's not getting too stuck in there. So you actually need to pull the fiber away from the fabric and make sure it stays that way as you peel this off. And then we just put it on again. <laughs> and then it doesn't, it doesn't seem to do it. It's like kind of like an initial thing before the wool grabs each other. It kind of wants to grab the fabric sometimes. So you just have to be at some point, pause, take that off. Then you can go again. You're getting somewhere. I am. Yeah. This one feels squishier squishier than this one. So the next time I do that, I'm going to flip it over and work from the other side. And if you're doing four pieces or two frogs, you know, this definitely is going to take a little longer because you've got to spend a little time on each, each one. So this time it should not be as stuck and it's not just comes right off. So before everything gets too far gone, you can kind of check your, check your placement of things. I'm gonna flip it over so that I work the pre-felt down into the fiber that we laid on it. it helps it really stick together. According to the Irish, Oh, if you have to swallow a frog, try not to think about it. <laughs> if you have to swallow two frogs, don't swallow the smaller one first. <laughs> okay, so with frog equals like unpleasant task. Yeah, and you kind of like... You could equate that to wrapping the toes. How, how could we make this parallel? <laughs> now, it's your choice. Which is another way of me saying, I don't know exactly what you need to do, but between just continuing with your hands, which I, I feel like is how we did the doodle bugs. We just did it all by hand or rolling a little bit. So to roll, Jennifer just walked in and told me to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> up in the bubble wrap and don't wrap the towel into don't it wrap like the I towel did the first it. time you get rid of all your water it you can it's use bad. the towel on the outside as a holder honor yes yeah instead of this annoy I find the ties annoying but because the, the towel does the trick but do not roll your towel into you don't want your towel coming in contact with the wool I think some people really like the ties good well I'm sure they do and some people really like wrapping tiny toes. <laughs> but I just like to use the tutorial as a way to air my grievances. <laughs> we did a frog dance, Jennifer. You want to do a frog dance? Oh, okay. You can join me at the end. <laughs> you said it. All right, so when you roll, it just it just should, you know, theoretically it's a little easier because. Ooh. Because you're still doing a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, coming together. I think I'm gonna go this direction. I went from the, from the short end. So I'll go from the wide side. 
Reminds me of a wide glide who did my very first tattoo. Wide Bubba, glide? Bubba wasn't there, so wide glide did it. Yep. <laughs> it was not which, a which situation. Which was that? It's covered up now. It was a oh. little sun on my ankle in like 1993 or 2 or 19, who knows when. Wide Clyde, huh? Was he wide a, Glide. Was he, wide Glide? Wide Glide, yes. Was he a big guy? Yes. Bubble was probably a big guy too, but I never <laughs> met him. It's one of those things that, like, you look back on and you're just like, that was not safe or... <laughs> you mean the things we try to have our children not do? Yes. All right. This is like tiny toes. I just reach a point where I'm like, I'm done with this. Give me some chocolate. Okay. What we're looking for... Is for things to be stuck. It's pretty stuck. I don't want it too, too stuck because I'm going to needle felt it a little yeah. bit. So you, you don't want it like super duper. I think this is good actually. I think if I um, hot, cold shock it. Yeah. Um, let me just do a little more. A little more. Um, that it's going to be just right. The other thing you can do is just take this thing off at this point and get it nice and soapy and just really like, it won't felt to itself at this point. What's the difference between a frog and a horny toad? I, I don't know what. One says ribbit, ribbit, and the other says rub it, rub it. <laughs> I can't believe you went there, Milo. Well, I could edit you, this part you out. You usually shy away. <laughs> this is editable. <laughs> You're like making a note. <laughs> edit, rub it, rub it. <laughs> it's too late. You can't edit it. I think that the adults can tell the kids... That's not funny. You don't need to understand that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is done. We're just we're just wasting time. Look at that, isn't that cool? It's a little skin all ready to go. Okay, we're not gonna film the next part. It's in many of our other <laughs> tutorials. Yeah, so what are you gonna do? But here? I take these, I am not nice to them, I scrunch them up, and I just squeeze them under hot water, squeeze them under cold water. Squeeze them under hot water, squeeze them under cold water. Yep, and That's then it. dry them out. And then dry them out. That's them. Looking good. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of stretching it out. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. I'm just making sure it dries flat so you can see how that goes. Yeah. Everything's stuck. Sometimes, sometimes a couple of naps won't stick, but that's okay. Then if you wanted to, before you attach this, you could establish those two ridges, and especially if you ironed or sewed, stitched that pleat in, really, really looks cool. I'm gonna let this dry and show that when it's dry.